Okay, let's uh, let's get started. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's stream. I'm Eric, photographer, editor, and I don't know, whatever other weird titles I give myself over the course of this. Uh, we are back. It's Tuesday night, so we're going to be doing some photo editing, and we are going to continue working on the photos from uh, my recent trip to Alaska. Uh, the thing that makes tonight exciting, uh, more than just the like awesome shots of Juno that we have, um, is we've got Maria Lisa on the couch, who, yeah, ha she has hands and makes noise. Uh, <laughs> And on the other end of the couch, we've got Shelby Lynn, who you definitely can't see. Uh, but no, I can't. Uh, no. <laughs> what a switch it be? This is going so well, guys. We're crushing it. Uh, who is a uh, renowned poet and educator, and uh, who will be uh, collaborating on a project on Thursday. So that's uh, we'll talk more about that at the end of the night. But actually, why am I lampshading? Why am I why am I building that up? So. Uh, Thursday night, here's the, here's the cool thing, uh, just to tease and get you to join in on Thursday. Um, so, of the 2,000 plus photos that I took in Alaska, uh, Shelby Lynn and I are going to select somewhere between like 6 to 10 of them. And on stream, on, you know, thir on Thursday night stream, we're going to have a camera set up for her, for her own feed. And as I edit each photo, she's going to be writing poetry about it. So we're going to have poems composed for the photos live on stream as the photos get edited. And then at the end of the night, we will have a kind of completed collection of, of beautiful photos and uh, beautiful poetry to go right along with it. So that is something that's going to be really cool coming up later this week. Uh, and yeah, so tonight she's on to hang out and to potentially, like, she might be doing some practice poetry back over there. I see her hiding a notebook, so she's up to, up, <laughs> up to devious creativeness. Um, okay, but with that said, uh, tonight we are going to be looking at photos from Juneau, the capital of Alaska. It's a... Oh, hello, Stephanie! Hey, Stephanie says hi. There we go. Uh, yes, yeah, so tonight's photos are from Juneau, the capital of Alaska. It's a uh, fascinating, fascinating city, fascinating stories around it, so we'll be talking about those as we go. And uh, yeah, as always, it's an open forum. Please feel free to share your thoughts, um, share your yeah your ideas, your anything that comes to your mind uh, as we go. If you have questions, if I'm going too fast, if I'm explaining something that doesn't make any sense, by all means, ask questions. If you're a photographer or someone creative and you have you want to share your work, absolutely drop your link in the in the comments, and everyone watching will check out your work and tell you how awesome you are. So, all right. With that all said, let's go ahead and jump on in. So, yeah, we got a bunch of photos from Juno. I haven't sorted through all of them. Uh, got a couple, couple panoramas at night, a couple, uh, couple shots during the day. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get started. I think I'll warm up with this shot of the seaplane here. Uh, I know it's a little cliche, but uh, I don't know, seaplane flying over, flying over the trees. I think is pretty cool. Let's see. Now you know, I actually like this as. The original yeah, shot one. I do kind of like that framing. I really do. I might. You know what? Hang on a sec. Let me. Uh, let me see if I can see if I click on that and turn on. There we go. We'll throw the edit on the up on the big screen so that Shelby Lynn and Maria Lisa can. Sh uh, throw there it is. I mean, that's a bit much there. Lightroom, don't you think? What is happening on that? <laughs> yeah, Light Lightroom decided this photo needed to be one pixel wide. It was a bit of it's a, it's a bold choice, really. Uh, bold strategy, Cotton. We'll see if it pays off for him. But yeah, I think I'm gonna try this one just kind of in that box, kind of let it be like that. I don't know. You know, take it. I'm, I'm taking that back. Something about this photo, I like. I really, I can't, I can't not enjoy the doing it as a as a shot like this. It's a little. It kind of, it lends itself to a more cinematic kind of look, I think, and I like that. I'm gonna come in a little bit, just to sort of balance it out in this middle box, so it is. Pretty perfectly centered, but yeah, let's try that. All right, usual plan. Clarity's pretty good. I think texture is gonna be the one that does more on this one. I think we're gonna get yeah, 
It's gonna pull up the trees without and everything without pulling out without being too aggressive. I think clarity is a little too much there. Uh, Dehaze, everyone's favorite tool. Yeah, pulls out some nice some colors very nicely. This shot's a little tiny tiny bit, uh, a little bit blurry just nature of. Uh, yeah, just the nature of yeah, the plane coming in slightly faster than my shutter speed. But I still like it. It's a good warm up for tonight. Um, we're going to do a. Bring the blacks down a little bit, make the. Make the let's see, if you bring the blacks down a bit, make the, tree, make the plane stand out a little more. I think I want to do that with color, though. So I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to create a virtual copy because I want to do a black and white version of this. I like this one a lot. So black and white. Uh, and we'll edit that one, and then we'll come back and work on the. Uh, the other one. Let's bring. Let's put the dehaze back where it was. I want to do this a little more specifically with the shadows and the blacks. Bring the whites down a bit. Come on. There we go. I think bringing the whites down helps pull the plane down a bit. Just a little more contrast. Something like that. That's not bad. Uh, let's see. What else do we want to do with it? Let's come down here to the colors and start playing with that. I'm, I'm betting the plane. No, I don't think the plane might actually not have a color. If I tell it to pick a color, what's it going to do with the plane? The white of the plane is going to okay. It's kind of it's kind of tapping it into yellow, but there's not much. There's not much color. That's that's a pretty good job of getting pure white. Let's bring the oranges down a bit. So we darken up the the text on the plane again. A little more contrast is not a bad thing. Uh, I'll bring up the reds and kind of get those some of those tips of the trees. Like we talked about last time, these uh, I believe those those trees are the Sitka spruce, which are all over the place in this area of, of Alaska, and they've got those nice reddish leaves on them. So makes for a good makes for some good contrast that we can work on. Oh, so we bring up, yeah, bring up the greens. Uh, I'm gonna bring these oranges down a little more. So this shot needs a little more contrast to begin with. Uh, a little bit of purple hanging out. Let's pull that down a bit. Is there any blue in this shot? There's a lot of blue apparently. Something like that. There we go. That's cool. Now we're finding a little bit of a, a little bit of a curve in there. Finding a little bit of tech of noise in the back there. I, I like that a lot. And always it's looking kind of painterly because we end up sort of losing the the shapes in the background. Let me lean into that. I do a. I do a mask here. This one shouldn't have a problem finding the subject, assuming it's not looking for a person. Give me the plane. Perfect. Cool. So we're going to invert that. We're going to get all the trees, not the plane. And then bring the texture down on them. Sharpness down, it's gonna look too. It ends up just looking blurry. That's the thing I like about the the texture and the clarity sliders. You can bring down the if you bring down the clarity on them and or bring them down, it ends up looking. Uh, hey, Shakira's here. Hi, Shakira. Hi, Shakira. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you bring down the if you bring down the the texture, if you bring texture and clarity, it ends up looking kind of like a little bit more like a lens blur. If you bring down the sharpness, it just kind of makes the whole thing look fuzzy. Done with that. So talk about how awesome you are, Shakira. Yep, I can vouch for that. That's they're they're back there whispering how cool you are.
pretty cool. Actually, it almost looks almost looks kind of to me. It looks kind of like a painting where you got, except you got like some weird photo element in the middle. I like that. Let's look at the color version. Uh, let's do some work on that one. Let's see. This is a little easier to work with. Let's see. Like saturation of the reds. We'll bring that up. We're gonna start getting the start brightening up the plane, and I'm kind of I'm kind of fine with what the plane is. So we're gonna the yellows. Let's go with some vibrance around the around the trees there. I like that. Let's get some magentas. I'm gonna do some good purple. Do some good purples and magentas in there. Yeah. What's what's all right? There's a question. So Shelby Lynn's uh, Shakira says she's very uncool, what? and we would all like to uh, aggressively disagree with that. Very aggressive. There we go. Disagree. <laughs> um, all right, Sh Shelby. What's the, what's the difference in being on the if you're wa you know being in the room versus watching online? It's three D. <laughs> <laughs> That's well. I mean, every, everyone else, you can put your glasses on, you'll get the same effect. Wow. <laughs> uh, no, that's funny. I told Shakira. <laughs> I told Shakira that you were streaming, and I said she should watch, but she didn't see my message. She just joined of her own accord. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Because you're awesome, babe. No, thank you. It's a very sweet thing to say. It's the truth. It, possibly. <laughs> I think they come over there. <laughs> oh, she, Shakira just said I'll be there in 20 minutes. <laughs> Which I think is a reference to the 3D thing, but I liked the... He said don't make me come over there, and Shakira <laughs> says I'll be there in 20 minutes. <laughs> like, Shakira, does, Shakira doesn't even threaten. Shakira's like, no, 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 I'm going to come. I'll, I'll just... I'll just like I've made the decision. I'm on my way over. That looks pretty good. Let's take the yellows in terms of push a little more toward green. Actually, a little more toward orange isn't bad. That kind of gives kind of gives us a nice color palette in the back there. In the back there. And then let's see if I want to brighten some of that up. I'm finding the photos that are like you know, have the trees in the background are are a good are like a fun challenge to try to. Ooh, that was kind of cool on the plane. Uh, fun challenge to try to keep the detail in there. Hmm? <laughs> she said trees are amazing. Trees are great, yeah. No, Shelby Lynn's, uh, Shelby Lynn's here from Texas, so the, you know, the, one of the many fascinating things we have here are just tons and tons of wonderful trees. Huge trees. Big trees. Very big trees. Green trees. They're also green, <laughs> which is just great. We're, we're just, man. So tonight's lesson, kids. <laughs> Texas is flat and dry and boring? No, uh, the side lesson is that Texas is flat and dry and boring. The real lesson <laughs> is appreciate sometimes the things you take for granted are really, really exciting to other people. <laughs> so make so count your blessings every day. Uh, and be sure to pray to our Lord and Savior Cthulhu and thank them for letting letting you live on this planet. Okay. Sure. <laughs> of all the gods to pray to, probably the best one. Uh, okay, so I like that. That's actually that ends up looking pretty good. Um, I'm sitting here. I don't know, if I'm, I don't know if, I'm, if I'm a better editor when I'm actually talking about what I'm doing, or if I'm just sitting here letting riffing and meanwhile my letting my hand just click sliders. I like that. What do we think? Neat. I like it. It's just like ball colors. A little bit, yeah. Pulled pulled them out a bit, but yeah. No, there's there's a lot of cool colors in that in those trees up there, and it's easy to. That looks vintage. What's on the black and white one or the original? The yeah, the black and white one, I, I said it was like, it's easy to over edit those and kind of lose the detail of the trees. And with the black and white one, I kind of leaned into it. So you end up like, yeah, you end up with this kind of almost artistic sort of blurring in the background. Okay, let's do, let's jump to the other end of the spectrum and do a, uh, do a panorama. Actually, real quick, I want to edit a, prince, a picture for Princess Cruises. Not that I work for them, but I took a picture of their boat that looked really cool. So uh, we're going to tweak that. Uh, Shakira says I put my AirPods in, so it's like an all it's like an all Eric Midnight movie. <laughs> the best kind of movie. I, I don't know. You like you've slept in the same bed with me after midnight and you tell me to shut up. That doesn't mean it's not entertaining. No, I know. It means that I'm tired. 
<laughs> and if I don't tell you to shut up, I'll let you stay up and keep me up all night. Yes. That doesn't mean I don't like it. <laughs> no, I did, like, I know you're like, I'm just teasing you. My levels of sleeplessness here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Never expected to be the to be the well rested person in a room. <laughs> it's an unusual thought for me. Yeah. Is the world caving in? I mean, demonstrably yes, yeah, but in yeah. s in small, less noticeable ways. really happy with how this looks right now. Uh, let's see, we can brighten up the oranges and make them a, I don't know, like, I feel like if I, if I make something too, like the, ideally I want you to notice the, like, the boat and notice the word Princess Cruises there, so, yeah, I don't know if there's much more to, where the hell is Princess Cru oh, that's it. yeah, it's right, like, if I zoom in on here, you can see it? Yeah, I can see it vaguely. Yeah, so, like, I'm trying, I want to make sure that that kind of I think, like it's it's pretty center frame. I think it's close to center frame. I think it draw, I think it does kind of draw it draws my eyes. So I'm I'm going to trust that it's going to like draw other people's. People who aren't blind. Right. Yes. <laughs> those, those those wonderful people. Let me do a. Let me do select subject. What am I going to get? You're going to give me some version of the boat. And you're probably going to give me some version of the the lights on the water. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. I also just want to invert this and up the noise reduction so that we clear out the look at the background gets a little more. Ah, uh, yeah, it gets a little, a little more. Let's see. Now we're gonna leave that as is. Leave the texture alone. Uh, play with the clarity. I'm not sure I need to. Yeah, I think the clarity is actually not too bad. I kind of like that. Dehazing is too much. What do you think? That, that, that seems like a bit much. It's pretty aggressive. Wait, wait there we go. That's a bit much. There's something to that, though. It's something cool. There's something cool with the boat. Like this is this is the you know the last princess cruise before the apocalypse. Yeah. I feel like you should save a version like that. Yeah. That's kind of really cool. Yeah, that's not a bad Send idea. Send it to Disney for their next movie. <laughs> <laughs> Disney, I've got this awesome idea. What happened? Let's let's do a horror movie about cruising in an uh, in an ultra capitalist hellscape. Could you imagine? <laughs> only if only if everyone else on the cruise is a Disney princess. Of course, it's princess cruise. That's that's my point. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's do a do a virtual copy there, so we can do one that is where we do kind of lean into that crazy dehazing look. Please stop working. Stop yes. Working. <laughs> what do you and what are you working on? There oh, we go. Soundtrack. I need to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Maria Lisa has two modes: t t uh, in bed, asleep, or working on Heather's. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Same. Oh, there we go, guys. She <laughs> Shakira thinks this is a sexy ship, and she's correct. Which is is that is that is this is, is this ship gonna be tonight's duck? That's like, the weirdest sentence I've ever heard. Yeah. Uh, I've been trying pretty hard. Yeah. No. I still haven't gotten. That's true. Yeah. Falling no. man limerick. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> for for those new catching up on this, the falling man limerick was the the look, one of the shots from last time. Looks like there was a uh, person falling off a boat, uh, and Shelby Lynn has vowed to write a <laughs> to write a limerick of this person's story. Shakira sent me a picture of her dog Penny sleeping on her while she watches the stream, and it's adorable. Aww. Penny's the best. Everyone say hi to Penny. Hi, Penny. Hi, Penny. Looks like she's asleep. Don't wake her up. Yeah. She's well. Perfect. Yeah. That's true. Uh, uh, Shakira, I, I can't tell if you're flirting with the ship or just talking about how cool your dog is. <laughs> like, you got, uh, baby's got back and she thick. Yeah, which, what are you talking with about? Three, with, with three C's. <laughs> is it the ship? Is it your dog? <laughs> um, are we still on last time's duck? Uh, the 
Also, while we're, while we're saying hello, hi, Evelyn and Mia. Hi, Evelyn and Mia. There we go. Yep. Your rendition of Let It Go was beautiful. Oh, that's right. Yes, we've been listening to your, you singing Let It Go on repeat, and it's just, it's been the soundtrack to our lives. It is now, it is now my ringtone when your mom calls. <laughs> All right. I'm just kind of arbitrarily clicking through photos here to take a look at some stuff from up on the top of the mountain in Juneau. That's a bit much. Let me see if I can do anything with this. See, there's not, there's, okay, there's not enough information here, I don't think. Oh, there, I keep doing that. There's some, wow, I'm actually impressed how much information is in this photo, but no, a lot of that's too, too overexposed. She hears that she's talking about the ship. <laughs> All right, we're going to get rid of this photo. This photo is not helping us, so delete. Yep. That photo was practice and did not work. Uh, she hears us, listen, I've had three Benadryls. <laughs> that's what we should, I, mean, I, keep, I keep wanting to, like, do a stream where I'm high or I'm on uh, it'd be kind of fun to everyone take a different something and see what kind of see what kind of work we end up with work? more like chaos I mean <laughs> that, I'm, not, I'm, I'm like we're sober right now I'm not sure we're safe we're you know protected you know we're escaping the chaos also I wish to have it be known because I'm grounded Pinterest mm -hmm. and I keep saving ideas for cups someone smacked me this week tell me to stop working on Heather's and make some freaking cups to sell there we go. Thank you, Shelby Lynn. You're, Shelby, Lynn, Shelby Lynn, you're on Maria Lisa smacking duty. <laughs> I need to make them so I can sell them and fundraise for Heather's. Yeah. Uh, I like these shots. I'm not sure any of them. I gotta keep looking. I gotta. I will buy a teacher cup from you. There we go. A sped teacher cup. <laughs> creative freedom. Go. <laughs> You did, yeah. Librarian, not teacher, shirt. But I can work with that design. Uh, I think librarians are teachers. Yes, but it wasn't specific to, to teachers. I That's true. It was specific, more specific to librarians. All right, let's see. Yeah, you have a reason to make a cup. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and a deadline to make a cup. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Deadlines always help. Or do they? Uh. Yeah, or do they. <laughs> I have some, they should. Uh, I have some um, orders in my shop from Caleb and Toby from over a year ago. Yeah, but Caleb and Toby, they're not like real people. That's mean. <laughs> they're very much real people. Uh, yeah, that's, that's Toby's probably a bird, true. but listen, he's a person. Right, and Caleb's Batman. Would, ooh, <laughs> no, we shouldn't say that. Sorry, Caleb is absolutely... Bruce Wayne is Batman. Caleb... Definitely not Batman. If you see Batman, it's definitely not Caleb. Oh, uh, did you see Viv changed her name, so she's now Viv Batman? That's amazing. Yeah. That's fantastic. Is she Batman? His name is actually his last name. His last... What? No, no, you're... Go on, yes. You're... Her friend's last name is literally Batman. <laughs> That's amazing. And he pronounces it Batman, too, doesn't he? No, I think it's Batman. Okay, Batman. Batman, like Batman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a great opportunity to be Batman. I'm literally Iron Batman. Yep. Batman. You should not say that live in where Riley could hear it. Is why Riley tunes in sometimes. Riley didn't hear this. Yep. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna edit this photo, but this is every time I go on a trip, I try to try. Ugh, every time I go on a trip, I try to take a, a what I call a sorry mom photo. So anything that's got like, look, here's a big you know cliffside and then like a big drop down, and here's my foot, just to be like, yeah, that, that's how close I was. I could you know I'm right there, and I could just I could just take a step, and now we end up and then end up going for a swim. Um. Also, this photo, honestly, might, let me try to edit this. We got a bald eagle in this one. I think this would be a cool one to edit. I, I originally just was trying to snap photos because it was cool that there was a bald eagle flying past. But, let's see. I promise I have to zoom in a lot, so. Let's see how this ends up looking. But the cruise ship back there makes for a nice, nice element. And the bald eagle over the water, this might actually work. Let's try this. Yeah, okay, this is this is at 105 millimeters, so I wasn't I wasn't on my big, like wildlife type lens. Uh, so let's see what we can do here. The focus is actually pretty good. This is that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. For for size, that's yeah. Tiny little school bus, couple of cars. Fun fact about Juno. Um, so capital city of Alaska, second biggest city in Alaska. But here's the, here's the thing. Um, Anchorage is the biggest city. Alaska has give or take eight hundred thousand people living in it, like the whole population of the state. 
uh, four hundred to five hundred thousand of them live in Anchorage. Juneau is the second largest with about thirty to forty thousand people. <laughs> so it's a it's a pretty huge gap between number one and number two. And Juneau um, has no roads into it. It has roads in the city, but the only way to actually get from the outside to, to Juneau is by boat or by plane. And so all of these vehicles you see down here, uh, all the vehicles you see down here have been brought in by boat over the years. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, in terms of editing this guy, this is going to be a select subject kind of moment. I don't need to dehaze this. This one's not. This one's. This one's more about just capturing the moment. Yeah, texture will do. We'll do the mask. All right, let's do. Let's do select like subject. See if we can see if, we, see if it gets. See if we can get the bird just based on the focus or based on the fact that it's in the center. Um. Okay, that's not what I wanted, but all right. <laughs> so step one, we're gonna. The good news is everything else has kind of stayed away from the bird, so I can subtract everything out here. Once I turn the flow back up. And I can, this should be pretty easy to just fix. Um, so let me, tell you my, let me tell you my favorite story about Juno. Um, so, and this is uh, especially fun if anybody is, if anyone works in emergency medicine, uh, because I heard this story, I'm like, yeah, this sounds on point. Um, so, Juno, so for the most part, Alaska does not have a lot of fast food. Like just across the board, like a lot of fast food franchises are just not in, uh, just are just not in Alaska. Um, so when there is one, it's a big deal. I think this is kind of excluding Anchorage. From what I understand, Anchorage does have a good amount of fast food because it's an urban setting. Like Anchorage is a full-on city. Um, all right, add brush. Uh, so we're gonna get a little more of this eagle. We're gonna get, get his back wing there, or his tail feathers. Back wing. What am I talking about? Yes, the third wing on this bird. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah all birds have a third wing. That one in the back. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Anyway, rear wing. Uh, yes. <laughs> Which you said rear wing, and my first thought was yes, Alfred Hitchcock's rear window. <laughs> that's that's what tonight's that's what tonight's turning into. Okay, so what I'm hearing is we all need to go to sleep. Hmm. <laughs> but this eagle demands demands our attention. Sure. Anyway, um, so uh, Alaska, so Juno get uh gets a McDonald's. And this is a huge deal. Like day one, like little, pretty much, like literally unofficial holiday. Like people actually did, like, uh, people actually did, like, you know, people closed offices early. They closed stores early so that they could go get in line and wait to get McDonald's. Like that was a thing that actually happened. America. Yes. Well, I mean, yeah. First, first time you get a McDonald's, that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah. No, so, so like the whole city kind of had a had a whole moment of. You know, like literally, like traffic backed up, city more or less stopped because everyone was either in, trying to get in line to get McDonald's or was like unable to function and do their job or dr drive through their home city because of the traffic and the line to get into McDonald's. Um, that McDonald's, like like we said, everything in Juneau can't be driven and it's got to be brought in by boat or by plane. So that McDonald's had been, you know started with enough food they thought for about a week and then they would get more and get another shipment each week uh that week's worth of food was gone in a matter of hours um so and by the time they you know they got an emergency shipment of more or not emergency but like a you know quick shipment of more food in to so they could open the next day now this information has spread to other nearby cities like Ketchikan, Skagway, uh and Sitka and what happened? I don't know. If this, I don't know if this happened on day two, or it sort of happened kind of around the same time, uh, like within that first week or two. But there was a there were a couple of paramedics who had to, who were like Juno has has is the is the major hospital or has a major hospital in the area, so they were flying, uh, flying a patient in, uh, got them delivered to the hospital, and then you know upon hearing that there's now a McDonald's in here, I'm not sure how much of this like how much that they they knew ahead of time, how much that they found out when they got here. Um, but upon hearing that, you know, deciding we should go to McDonald's, they showed up at the, at the McDonald's with, like, with their stretcher, showed up with the lights going, ran inside the McDonald's as if they'd been called on a medical emergency, got in there, loaded up the entire stretcher with Big Macs, literally the, pretty much the McDonald's entire supply of Big Macs, and then ran out with a stretcher full of McDonald's, got in their helicopter, and took off with it. 
the people of Juno call it the Big Mac Hellevac, uh, which is a real thing that happened. And honestly, from the from the paramedics and EMTs that I know, I uh, it's it seems on brand. I think they'd all be like, "Yeah, we would." Uh, okay. Meanwhile, still working on this. Theoretically, still working on this bird. What? Bird. Bird. Yes. But yes, so Juno's an interesting place. It's got a lot of fun history. But yes, that's the, the story of the Big Mac Hellevac. Let's see. Let's same deal. Now we're doing the reverse, so we want to get the whole area down here. So we're just going to add. Got to get everything that's not bird related. Not bird shaped. You're bird shaped. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I, I, I'm, I, like, here's the thing. I don't know if we can top you yelling that I'm bird shaped, but at the same time, I want to find out. <laughs> we'll the happily you keep keep me awake. The, the weirder I'm gonna get. That's so. kind of the that's like my my master plan's been exposed. Oh boy. Sh Shakira says the the hell of act seems legit for a Big Mac, and I mean, yeah, they're, they're pretty good. Can understand. Chad is like a minute behind, so she might say something really funny about your bird shaped. That, yeah, that's certainly hope so. Uh, well, I'll erase the eagles of the head. This is not this is not an exact science and doesn't need to be because mostly this mask is just to kind of do some stuff with the background. Okay, let's zoom back out. Let's pull the texture down. Bit much. I'll just pull it down a little bit. Let's bring the blacks down so that we kind of pull the help separate the bird from the foreground, the bird from the background. Uh, I'm going to up the noise reduction, which will help smooth that out a little bit back there. Uh, I'm just going to desaturate a bit, I think. I don't know. That's the thing about desaturating the background on a bald eagle shot. I'm actually, what if I up the saturation? We get, huh? What do you think? Do I like the saturation up or down? Like that's up. This is down. Give it a sec to update. There we go. Um, it's kind of like down actually. The bird pops more. It does a little bit. I don't know. My, my, my only worry with that is like I love the idea of like pulling the colors out for a bird, but bald eagles are just they're, like they're like that works better for like a parrot or like a toucan. Mm, sure. Where it's like, you know, like bald eagles are just they're all they're just nothing but neutral colors yeah. apart from that orangish beak. Like they're just there's a lot about bald eagles that, that is goofy as fuck. No, I'm being goofy as fuck. I'm you are, really restraining from may, saying some weird shit. Maybe you're the bird. <laughs> you were the bird the whole time. You haven't seen the notebook, so you don't know what I want to say. I have that. absolutely seen the notebook. You have? I have. I was hiding in the bird. hallway when my parents told me to go to bed. We're watching a movie for adults. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> yeah, no, my, my, my parents. Seen my, the, if you're a bird, I'm a bird scene. Wow, yeah, unlocking a core memory there, but yeah. Yeah. Remember when we all thought that scene was so romantic? Like, the movie is romantic, but the, but saying if you're a bird, I'm a bird is fucking stupid. Yeah. I think I'd agree with that. I don't know. Uh, Ryan, hey, Ryan, Ryan Gosling, when you check out this stream, you tell us what you think about this. Like, we want you to weigh in on this debate. Don't get me wrong. Love you and Rachel McAdams to death, Nicholas Sparks. <laughs> Although that's probably his best movie. Oh, it's definitely his best movie. Yeah. But that's, I'm not sure, like, I've, I mean, I've had very little, I've had limited, like, experience with Nicholas Sparks, but, like, it's his best movie, but I'm not entirely sure that's on him, because, like, I mean, I'm fairly certain the people behind a lot of the other movies were not trying. No, the thing is, he writes the same story. This is his formulaic. Mm. Like, everyone, someone has to die at every, the end of every single movie. Yeah, that's not. Yeah. That one's the best because it's. I mean, it's. I think it, the be reason why it's the best is because the filmmakers, like, did a good job with it. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So to be fair, on if you're a bird, or I'm a bird. We also, once upon a time, all thought that holding a woman in front of you at the front of a ship was romantic. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> And a lot of questionable things where we, wa we watch like the most romantic 
Street movies. Yeah. That's really funny. <laughs> As I say that, this picture of Meg Ryan pop, pops up from When Harry Met Sally. Oh, of course. The nice. most toxic <laughs> fucking relationship ever. Is it really? Eh, not the it most. Seem, though. <laughs> the, yeah, yeah. It's not the most toxic relationship. I mean, the beginning of the movie is. They grow together. They grow a lot throughout the movie. But he's an asshole. I fell asleep watching When Harry Met Sally on my grandparents' floor. That's a good memory. <laughs> I feel like I've up to, I feel like I've worked on this bird enough. We're gonna move on a little bit. You worked on wow. <laughs> you were you were about to say you say worked. You worked on the bird enough, but I'm like that's literally what you just <laughs> said. I love the idea. I, lo- I love that we've reduced. We've we've gone from like we're no we're no longer just tweaking the insult. We're just saying what you <laughs> said back to. <laughs> you just it's not it's not even insult. It's just affirming me now. Yeah. I'm just, I'm feeling, I'm you're like, you're helping me feel seen, and I appreciate this. <laughs> My pleasure. Yeah. I feel seen, I'm happy about it. <laughs> Alright, so let's, yeah, let's do a panorama real quick of uh, Juno at night. So step one, switch this to the original. Done. Take all these, and the, I'm shooting this from the, from the railing of the ship, so we're going to crop that out. Uh, as we go, let's sync this up just with, yeah. Crop and lens correction, synchronize. So those should all get. There we go. Uh, let's see how did these get cut up. What are you doing? It's a gremlin. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what you're doing. I'm on Pinterest and it's I'm another just terrifying cat. Yeah, really? So this is a real one, <laughs> we think. Mm-hmm. I'm on Pinterest just scrolling. Yeah, so it, it must have something, or it must be a certain breed or something like that. But it's just, it's a drowned kitten. Oh, no! <laughs> Not actually. It's like a wet cat. But it's got really, really wide set eyes. It's so like big eyes. It looks like a Furby. This is honestly so much better with you guys just describing it than me actually seeing and it. And I can't open it, though, because when I click on it, it goes, whoops, we couldn't find that page. I think I think that's like your computer trying to save you. <laughs> Let's see, open images and images. I don't think that does it. It doesn't. Oh, God. Just turn around and look. I don't. No, I refuse. You know, I'm, 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 I'm keeping this tab open. I'm gonna probably freak myself out tomorrow. Make <laughs> sure you don't close it on that. Tab. Right. Yeah. Shakira's quoting Titanic at us now. What did she say? And, uh, I will never let go, Eric. I'm, I mean, Jack. <laughs> So much fun just listening to this get described. It has human looking eyes. <laughs> what the fuck is happening here? I mean, I mean, like, is it a house cat? Yeah. Okay. It's a small little thing. That's weird, because, like, big cats have human looking eyes. Yeah, it's gotta be a kitten. Alright, Shakira wants to see, so you gotta, okay. send, you gotta send it to her. Okay, I will. She's <laughs> just gonna send her this link. It's the weirdest fucking thing. taller version of this, then we're going to crop out the bottom and the sides. So, yeah, we're uh, in the auto settings. Let's, okay, the auto settings aren't bad, but I'm going to let, I'm just going to merge for now. Let's see what we get. <laughs> Stephanie's reassuring Shakira that there's room on the door. You don't have to let go. It looks like a gremlin, she said. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, Mythbusters busted that myth. There was not room on the door. No, there was. No. Yeah, no, no Mythbusters proved there was room on the door. I thought they didn't. Yeah, no, no, no they, for them, they, proved, they proved that myth. Is, no, they proved that there is. That they could have done it. Yep. Please start all conspiracy theories about what Kate Winslet's really up to in the comments. Being fabulous. I mean, duh. I fucking love Kate Winslet. She's pretty great. So I'm looking at uh, up ideas for cups, and this was a water bottle that says 
straight out of shape, but bitch, I'm trying. <laughs> me. I'm for shooting panoramas and having to crop out all the uh, all the extra stuff from the cruise ship. Uh, the the facts have been checked. There was room on the door. There we go. <laughs> I'm <laughs> Stephanie hearing this is like, oh, this is gonna get divisive in the polycule. <laughs> right, now my question is, I took the time to shoot a panorama of this. Is it a better shot than the one than this one? <laughs> Shakir says there was room, but I pushed him off. <laughs> Oh, but she would make, she'd make room for Kate. Yep. Yes. We love some Leo, but I love Kate more. Mm. I, li I mean, I think we liked Leo a lot more pre, like... Him turning, what was he, 40? I mean, like, but, like when he was dating girls his own age. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Before he turned into Jack Nicholson a little bit. Yeah, that's like, valid. personality-wise, I think. That's fair. He's still... He's still hot, but he's, like... Like, you know how George Clooney and, and to a certain extent Johnny Depp, like, they're aging and they definitely look like they're getting older, but they still are, like, suave and whatnot? Uh, that is so much more true for George Clooney than Johnny Depp, but That's go fair. on. That's fair. But, like, something about... To be fair, George Clooney's got, like, 80 more years of practice. <laughs> yeah. Something about Leo, I don't know, I don't like the way he's aging personality-wise. Yeah, personality-wise well, it's, it's getting like weird. He's not dating people his own friggin' age. Yeah, that's kind of the only thing, because he does a lot of really good work with, like, yeah, he does for, like, the environment and, like, First Nations people as much as, he, you know, as much as the, like, rich Hollywood white boy can. <laughs> but, like, yeah, no, the, like, the, the pussy posse thing is still weird. That's, that's kind of a, it's, it's a, it's a pretty, pretty big red flag. Yeah. Like, it's not, it's not quite, like, you know, NFL stadium size red flag, but it's, like, car dealership size red flag. <laughs> I mean, there's that too. Speaking of which, we gotta see Nope. Yeah, we do. So. And Shakira and Stephanie have like completely, are, are like, have decided to disengage with our nonsense and are, and are just like fangirling over Kate Winslet, which, <laughs> fair. The correct course of action. Right, exactly. <laughs> The thing we should all really be doing. Uh, Speaking of Kate Winslet, yesterday I was actually looking at because I, some the eternal sunshine came across my. Steph, uh, Shakira, it is wonderfully obvious, but please continue continue to be friends. Uh, and, and Stephanie's like, and now Eric's stream comment section is a Kate Winslet thirst club. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Anyway, you were saying? Uh, I just want to watch Eternal Sunshine because I've never seen it. I haven't seen it either. The list. Absolutely add it to the list. Uh, yeah, this boat railing and I are not getting along. But actually, I can probably get rid of it. Using photo magic. Yeah, they got they got they got a they got a collection that's just that's cool. unreal. They got a collection so big she's categorized them all in an app. Yeah, oh, that's freaking cool. Ooh. This is out of date, but I knew there's like like hard copies like that. Yeah. Wow, that's really cool. These are all of our physical copies of movies. We gotta get to work. <laughs> we don't have space. Mm -hmm. That's just just bookshelves. Like, uh, it will need to have. I I will agree to this on the condition that it also has one of those cool ladders that like you know is on yes. rails that you can slide around Excuse on. Excuse me, I need to live my Belle Beauty and the Beast dreams. There we go. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. Hundred percent. There we go. That's we good. removed a railing. My Belle impression <laughs> with a ladder. This photo is about to get a lot better.
This is so wonderful. Good morning, Belle. <laughs> 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 You two are fabulous. <laughs> I'm so happy this is happening. Every minute of this segment is making me is just making me more and more happy. Uh, also, this photo is coming along very nicely. Right, I gotta clean up some spots up there on the top, but this is looking pretty good. It's horizon is surprisingly pretty straight. Not too bad. Oh, Shakira wants a movie night. We do too. Uh, uh, when, are you, when are you leaving? Saturday night. Okay. I was going to say, who did we cast game night this Saturday? Hmm. Mm. Yeah. I think maybe there, yeah. Yeah, like the, there's nothing at the theater after rehearsal. We just stay and play games for a bit. That's true. So yeah, I think what's going to happen with the with these photo streams, um, and this is the thing I have not had because I've been uh, Shelby and I've been planning to do the our little uh, photo poetry collaboration. Um, I have not like I didn't want to go through the photos and like start deleting them yet, and and until Shelby got the chance to kind of see what the options would be. So what's going to happen I think is after Thursday after we do this cool this awesome like collaboration that we're going to do. Um, we're gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna. I will go through all. Go through all the photos and cl and <laughs> kind of clear out the one. Like pick out the ones. Pick out my favorites. Delete a lot of the rest. And then uh, I'll start doing kind of nights where we're like, all right, tonight we're gonna be in Juno, and tonight we're gonna work on Glacier Bay. Or we're gonna work on wildlife shots. So it's kind of gonna end up being something more like that in the future. Uh, so tonight we're doing Juno because there's not a whole like. I love these photos from Juno, and Juno's really cool. But it's in terms of the the photos Shelby Lynn and I are going to work on. There's some there's some really amazing ones coming on Thursday. Uh, I'm so excited. <laughs> it, it's going to be awesome. Are you secretly writing poetry back there? No, no, I've been distracted. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably entirely my fault. <laughs> it's absolutely your fault, and thank you. There you go. Yep. And I'm fueling chaos. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got the sky there. We can do. We can reduce the noise. Yeah, let's up the clarity on that. Cool. All right, now we're gonna do a couple more masks and kind of tweak some of these areas. Uh, let's see. I want to do a linear one. I want to get. I want to do some stuff with the water down here. I love the colors here, but I want to adjust a little bit because I want to lean into the fact that the water uh, in Juneau. I mean, the water in most of these areas of Alaska is a much brighter color than you might think it is. I think it's a lot of it's because it is because um, so much of the water in Alaska is at least partially glacial melt. Track brush. We're just gonna clear this. Let's lift up the feathering. Bring the flow down a little bit. I'm just gonna just wipe off the area over here, so we're not getting the docks as much. There we go. Just a little bit of that. There we go. So we're just getting mostly just getting the water and the reflections on the water. Cool. All right. So let me bring up the highlights. Yeah, bring up the highlights is good. Get some more of that in there. We've got a couple shots that are that are probably gonna come up that are similar to this. Um, uh, when we actually when we get to when we start ooh there we can bring the clarity up that does something cool uh, when we get to Glacier Bay and kind of the the photos from from at sea because there's some beautiful shots with like these islands in the foreground and then just a nonstop mountain range in the back I wish there was a good way on on Instagram to share panoramas like this because so much of, like so many cool things about Alaska are just the breadth of it and the scope uh, okay so let's let's crank the saturation up on the the water there yeah there we go. I'm just gonna leave that where it is. I love. I just love the color on that water. Uh, I don't want to adjust it. I just want to pull it out a little more. It is. I'm gonna 
texture. Doesn't do a whole lot for me. Taking the texture down also doesn't do much. Let's just leave it where it is. Dehazing is going to be, yeah, it's the wrong way to go with that. Keep it like that. Cool. Done. Let's come down here. I want to see if I can bring up the blues a little bit. Let's do, let's do this. Can I invert this mask or no? No, because there's already stuff on it. Um, yeah, we'll say we're done there. I'm gonna work on, let's play with the colors down here a little bit. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna bring up the saturation of all of the colors that are coming from the city. So the reds, the oranges, and the yellows. Which will hopefully brighten up probably the greens as well. Because most, of, so much of this is blue that I wanna bring up the other colors and make them pop a little more. There we go. It's minor changes, but it makes the city seem so much more vibrant, I think. Yeah, there we go. The greens are really aren't doing much. Purples maybe a little bit? Some purples in there that are worth bringing up? Yeah, we're getting some... One thing I like about, like, June over here is, like, this bridge has a whole bunch of colored lights on it that are giving some nice reflections in the water. Uh, you can't really... It's not a huge draw. I didn't get a whole lot of pictures focusing on it, but just... Yeah, it... And that every little bit of brightening up the lights of the city makes the city a little more vibrant. Let's up here to, to the shadows. You can bring them up a little more. Bring up the actual area of the city. That looks pretty, like really fucking good. That's that's my favorite one from tonight so far. All right, let's do a mountain shot. Let's work on that. Let's see what kind of mountain shots we got here. We did a bunch of them. Uh, this is from the dock as evidenced by like the picture I took here which is just the like top of a ship uh, so which is actually the ship that I was on because like there's the uh, give it a sec to load maybe what's ever else there is there's your Dutch flag uh, let's look at look at a couple of these shots with the mountains here with the snow fields on them It's the fun part about shooting in Alaska is you're trying to capture both the you're trying to capture like the detail in the mountains and also cap like trying to capture the fog and the de and the mountains and so you kind of end up with these shots that are sort of light and dark at the same time. It's kind of hard. What what, what are we gonna see when we edit this down? Mm, excuse me. Let's unlock that. Let's bring this over and kind of crop out the edge of the ship. There we go. Off. We can go up a little bit. I don't know if we need to. Yeah, I kind of like it there. Kinda, if we go up too high, we're, we want a little bit of space. Because like, that's the thing about mountains. Is mountains always make you want to look up. So I think if we bring it, if we kind of look up a little more. We we give a little headroom. It makes us look up and makes us imagine the height in a small way. It's kind of nice. There we go. It also, and this is kind of. I, I don't know. If, I don't know how how much this is. Psychology. I don't know if this is me. Uh, this is just me projecting or what. But like, I notice like when I shoot film, um, a lot of the time I will like this is kind of the amount of headroom I try to get. Like if this if this top of the mountain is my actor, um, like yeah, yep, Shakira. Those are snow fields. Nice job. Yeah. Someone paid attention to the last stream. Uh, I kind of allow that headroom above it. Above a person in a in a frame, especially if it's not a close up, if it's just kind of frame of a frame, frame of like a, a normal shot of a person, I kind of allow a decent a little bit of headroom there, and this to me feels proportionally kind of the right amount, um, and I'm wondering if this is like in my head, giving that like that amount of space feels right because it feels like it's personifying the mountain. All right, let's bring up the clarity here. Let's bring in some of that detail. If I dehaze this, yeah, there we go. Get a lot of noise in the sky. We're gonna work on that. Bring up the texture. Yeah, I want. I want to win the grid of this one. Let me bring up the highlights, and that whitens up our sky in a good way. Is that smoke? Uh, no. I think that's fog. That's where, that's where it's all cloud. Yes, it's not. It's not so much fog because it's not so much fog because fog is like cloud down at our level and. Uh, Cloud. This is just that's just how high, this thing is just high enough up to be in the clouds. It just looks like there's like a trail of smoke going 
there's a t it's wispy and it moves. It moves. There's a lot of like I, I a couple photos from Skagway that I think are as close as I got to capturing how fast the fog moves there. But it really does just book it through through a lot of these places. So it's kind of like the wisps that get caught, you know, kind of get caught in the trees or get kind of just as like if if it if that section of fog, of like cloud is a little bit heavier with water. It, it drops lower and the wind blows over it, so it kind of it kind of stays behind as a wisp or moves moving slower. Um, so yeah, it's the fo the fog and the clouds in Alaska are fascinatingly cool, and that's like yeah, this is a, this is a state that gets on average two hundred and fifty plus days of rain per year. Um, when we did when we were whale watching, we had a moment where the sun came out and just wait to see those photos, um, but the uh, our naturalist was. <laughs> jokingly getting mad at us for you know what are, what, are, what are we doing bringing the sun to alaska he's like i haven't seen the sun all all season i wasn't ready for this so all right let's push let's see i think our aquas are there we go yeah we're gonna push that toward green push our blues yeah pushing our blues a little toward green is a little too much we're gonna push the, push the aquas toward green i want to push the color temp of the whole thing a little bit to green oh, no not it's too much let's take this just to zero is that enough Give us a little more green. Or I think we should push this a little toward yellow. That'll do it. Give it a little more. There we go. A little, a little away from the blues and a little more into the greens, into the yellows and greens. Shakira says goodnight. Good night, Shakira. We're so glad you joined us. We love you. It's true. Let's go to 7,000. Yeah, something like that. A little bit of color in there. All right, down here. We can push our yellows toward green if we wanted to. I don't really need to do too much. Just leave that where it is. I like these photos to be a little more vibrant than you might expect, just because I feel like it's so... The, the assumption with Alaska is that it is bleak and austere and just this, like... And like the assumption with Alaska, I, th I feel like a lot of the time is like, yeah, it's it's bleak and it's austere, and and like, if you do see Alaskan photos with a whole bunch of color in them, usually it's photos from like glaciers or photos with like, um, so it's like it's a lot of the, it's a lot of, a lot of blues, and like yeah, we just did that with the with the the panorama of Juno at night, but I think for like. Alaska was surprisingly lush. It was, it's like, it's very, it's very rainy and it's very, like, it's, it was a, a surprisingly vibrant place. And I kind of want to lean into that and kind of enjoy that aspect of it in this photo. Um, despite maybe doing, a, uh, I'm debating doing a black and white version of this one, though there's, there's some really good, uh, we got some really good mountaintops coming up in future streams uh, that will. Like, I'll have some really good black and white austerity to them if we want to go that route. Say what? What just happened? Oh, boy. oh no. No, 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 no. What happened? Reasons to never pause Disney movies. Uh, we paused it. What, what Disney movie did we pause in the wrong spot? Cinderella. It's getting worse. You just gotta see it. You All right. It. Fair enough. This is. Spence is building, guys. Welcome to welcome to Eric's photo editing stream and Disney movie tease. Oh, she's about to show me live. This is gonna go. Is <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> what, what movie is that? Is that the Rescuers? No, this is Cinderella. Oh, it's, oh, sorry, it's Cinderella. What am I talking about? Uh, sorry, I'm thinking. I, I, I got. I you show me thing with thing with mice. I'm assuming. I'm assuming rescue. <laughs> All right. Okay. That's. Uh... Yeah, that, that's not good. That's not. I don't. I don't. I don't, don't want to know what those mice are doing with those beads. Yeah, I know you know what those mice are doing with those beads. <laughs> Alright, tonight's brainstorming question. Come up with a kinky version of Cinderella. <laughs> Funnily enough, that's not the first photo I've seen from Cinderella tonight. <laughs> this is this is true. You showed me like we're already Yeah, no, we're I'm on number two. How many people when they started their day predicted I was gonna they were gonna see kinky Cinderella more than once? <laughs> That one at least is a meme. That one's something they actually someone actually created. This wasn't it wasn't just it wasn't just like 
We paused the movie at the wrong moment. <laughs> you can't see it, but I'm getting looks. Oh my god. Your know, photo looks pretty good. Every like. Time, did, you, did you watch Schitt's Creek? It's. Uh, I just feel like I look like David. Stephanie, <laughs> without being shown it, Stephanie knows what meme you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie, I'm so proud to know you. <laughs> also, this photo was done and I think looks pretty good. Um, I feel like this is me. <laughs> I also, I love that. how he constantly goes back to the wine conversation every single time, and other people don't even know what he's talking yeah. about. Yeah. I did like how they addressed that, though. Yeah. Like, very well done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to crop this photo into here now, because I think it, like, think about it, like, it, the other yeah, snowfields weren't doing a whole lot for us, and now we get to, and we kind of get to enjoy this little area up here. photos we, do we have of Juno that we can look at? I haven't plotted that before, but almost every relationship. Let's see. Especially in the 90s, like, that was a very, like, a uh, kind of A couple cool shots of seaplanes here. Which... This one was a little unnerving when I saw this coming at us. Uh, Let's see why. This is, I like this shot, not so much because I want to edit it and, uh, and, like, try to make something, some you know, pull some art out of it, but I like this shot just because it really does, you know, I, I'm going to edit a, a quick version of this, because this shot really does hammer home, like, just how normal seaplanes are in Alaska, and how, like, just, yeah, just the fact that they, like, you will see them flying over houses, they're just, like, they are a, as opposed, like, opposed to here, where, like, when I first saw this, I was, when I got to Vancouver and saw seaplanes, I'm, t like, I'm snapping picture after picture, being like, this is so cool, we get to see seaplanes. And meanwhile, over here, it's in Alaska. It's like, no, this is just normal. This is a, this is a normal mode of transportation, and for some people, it's a more no normal mode of transportation than cars. So, like, the normality of, of a seaplane just flying over this neighborhood here, I think is cool and worth making note of. Again, let's bring up some yeah, the black. Let's bring up the saturation. Let's go back to where you were. Yeah, saturation still pulling up the purples a lot more than I want it to. All right, let's see. let's bring up the. Why are we doing that? Nah, this photo should be softer. A little bit of dehazing just to kind of sharpen up those, sharpen up the contrast. Let's go down here and play with color. Bring up the reds, oranges. I think we could overdo the oranges a bit. Let's bring the reds back down. We'll let the orange be the main one we play with. Yellows? The yellows are kind of gilding the, the trees and stuff. I like that. Um, there's blue, but there's too much blue. So we're going to bring a, let's bring a little bit of blue in. And we can definitely overdo the purple. I think I'm going to leave the purple more or less out. Aquas? Yeah, a couple of windows down there that are worth doing. And then the greens? A little much. Something like, something like that, though, is not bad. Down. I'm brighten up the reds a little bit so that so they pop out a little more. Uh, brighten up the greens helps. Just kind of brings out a, make, makes it, again a little bit more vibrant. For some reason, bright green. I mean, bright green is just the color we've associated with vibrant and with vibrance and life. So having bright, brightening up greens and stuff, I think, is a good idea. The aquas doesn't really do a whole lot. It's just mostly, mostly those two windows down there in that yellow house. So we're gonna leave those alone. Brightening up the purples, though, is a good idea. Even though we're not brightening up the, there we go. Even though, even though we're not bringing up the color, the saturation, bringing, bright, brightening up the luminance on them gives us a nice, yeah, brings up the colors there. Or kind of lets lets us focus on the stuff that's there without going over saturation into something a little too, a little too, a little yeah, oversaturated with something a little too. I'm trying to think of the, good, the word for it. A little too garish, I guess would be the word. Cool, and then we'll yeah, bring the bring the clarity down a little bit, and give it a little bit of a hazy, like not a, you know not the not not a foggy, but a bit, of a, a bit of a hazy filter on it. Put the plane there in the middle. Yeah, I, I think I like the. I always start. I always kind of start these photos with like by cropping them, and I always end up doing some doing some editing, and then going back and be like let's recrop this to. 
contextualize it more. And that's just the you know the thing I love about the creative process and the editing process as well is, and that's one of the reasons I stream it and I share it is because there's so much of it that's revision and so much of it that is right. I think this is how I want to do it. And then you start working and you start finding detail, finding things. You're like, no, you know what? This is actually this photo is it's telling me it's more something else. So we're gonna lean into that and you go back and revise. And I like that. Let's see, tram up to the top of the mountain. Uh, Oh, fun fact. Let me let me make sure I'm getting this right, uh, because I do not want to say this wrong uh, on stream. That's the wrong thing. Let's see. But let me make sure I do know the answer to this. Um, I am not going to try to pronounce this because it is a uh, is a Klingat word that I do not know how to pronounce specifically, and I don't want to get it wrong. But the uh, the y e i l on the side of the tram uh, is actually the Klingat word for raven. Which is, uh, which is cool, because, yeah. Um, there's also, I didn't, we didn't check. I don't know if the, like, like ravens, eagles, wolves, um, whales, otters, uh, a lot of, are some of the kind of the core animals. This is, again, this is coming from a, coming from a, you know, like, uneducated white guy with a very rudimentary understanding of the, even the basics of Klingon culture. Um, but... Like raven, ravens, eagles, wolves, um, uh, whales, orcas, kind of specifically, and otter, otters, among others, are very were are kind of core animals to the Klingon people, and uh, so there's a lot of so this like this, the art you see here um, is either um, is representative of in the I believe in the Klingon style. Um, and so the, I don't know if the, there were two cable cars and I didn't look to see if this one, if the other one was named after, named, uh, it had a different name on here rather than Raven. If the other was like, it's, you know, one's the Eagle car, one's the Raven car. Um, cause we did see both Eagles and Ravens in, uh, in Juno. But the, this is the question that, uh, me and the friend I was traveling with had when we saw, we weren't sure what that meant. And then later on in the trip we found out. So yeah, that means that is the Klingat word for Raven. Which is cool. When we get to Glacier Bay, I'm gonna. I do. I do. Have, I do know. I'm a little more confident there. I know. I know a couple of uh, Klingat details about the Glacier Bay because that was their. That was the Klingat people's original, uh, original homeland. So. Uh, meanwhile, I'm gonna tweak this photo a little bit by bit. I don't know why this thing keeps locking these photos. I'm like, yeah, we're gonna adjust this. I think that down so it kind of crosses right in the center. I might be better want to come down so it kind of crosses right on that third. Yeah, my inclination. Oh, let's go to the top of the trees. Let's do it right like that. So the trees are kind of the kind of the determining factor there. Yeah, let's do it like that. I like how that looks right now. Let's bring up our greens. Both in saturation and in vibrance, let's bring, or in, in luminance, let's bring them up. Not quite that much, it's a bit much. Move the reds a bit, that's a, a little bit of reds up, and let's bring up the, the luminance so we brighten that up. It's funny how often I feel like saturation gets mistaken for for luminance. Like you don't necessarily want necessarily always want to go. It's yeah, sometimes it's less about enhancing the colors, more just brightening the color that is there. Bring the orange there, the yellows. Yeah, bring the yellows down. So it seems like a good idea. I want to get the. Let's see, is the fact that the yellows affect the trees? Not much. That's actually pretty good. We'll do that. Uh, yeah, because these these windows are tinted, so the light coming through them ends up looking kind of. You ever like holding like blue light glasses or sunglasses up to the sun and kind of or up to the you know up away from your face and you can see kind of the way the world is different through the lens. These tinted windows kind of doing the same thing, so I wanted to compensate for that a little bit. Let's see. Let's see what we can play with in terms of the sky. If we bring the highlights down, there we go. Now we're getting. Now we're pulling some sky out. Let's bring the whites down. Might be better. I'm gonna go ahead and select the sky. We're probably only do a couple more, couple more photos from here, and then call it a night. We're doing a shorter thing tonight so that we've got some time to to pick out the the photos for next time and to, to get ready for that. So there we go, now we get the sky and I can... That perfectly. Hmm? That did that like perfectly. What did? The mask. It does, yeah, no, the, 
This one's Mason makes it pretty easy. There we go. Let's dehaze the sky and just pull all the weird colors out of it. So that does give us a lot of texture. Give it a sec. It's about to cl it'll it'll click in on the big screen. There we go. Yep. That needs to be that needs the noise removed and the texture removed so we don't get so it's not super obvious that it it's looks like airbrush when it's not got the, the noise in there. Exactly, but that is better. Cool. Alright, I'm a little bit. Alright. Good night, baby. Can I come over? Yeah, you can come over. Maria Lisa says good night. Yeah, she is. Oh. <laughs> Hi Stephanie. Mm. Hi, love you. Good night. definitely affecting the tram in a little bit of a way so we're going to subtract mm. there we go uh, we're going to subtract the the tram car itself because I think that's being, yeah it's being affected let me see the overlay here and we can clear this out yeah that spot's being affected oh we got to turn the flow back up so it's actually yeah this is actually an effective erasing tool there we go starting to come come out better Stephanie says good night one of these days I gotta time this and try to figure out what the actual delay uh, delay is how are you doing over there I'm fine <laughs> are you tired that's not it yeah little bit of cleaning up yeah because it's it did it was pretty good with the sky but it did catch a lot of the cable car stuff so I want to see if I can clean that up a little bit yeah we'll clear out everything that's in here Come on, stop messing with the zoom. There we go. So if I turn the overlay off. It's about a 10 second delay. All right, there we go, 10 second delay. Perfect. If we turn that off, that looks that looks much better. Uh, I'm gonna go, if I tell to select the subject, let me see what I get. Cause it might get the cable car. And that would be cool. That's actually pretty spot on. That's, it, it caught a little bit of the, it's catching the sky in between, so I'm gonna be careful with that. But, that, uh, catching the sky means I can't do a whole lot with it, unfortunately. Though, there's no reason that I need to really get, let's see, is there, okay, so it's catching that. Let's do a subtract brush. Like, the stuff up here is pretty much fine. Let's get rid of all that. Mostly just be the car that I want to do any tweaking to because it's the colors on the car. So I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to zoom in again. And just kind of clear off this area here. There's a little too much blue being affected on that car. I'd like to, I'd like to not have to worry about that. There we go. So now I can push this a little more toward yellow and in this case it makes the reds stand out really nicely so, so that looks pretty amazing I'm really really happy with that photo let's lock that in let's see if there's anything, any other photos I want to tweak it's funny I like, didn't really do a whole lot of mountain shots despite being in Juno uh, I mean, it's because I've been looking at photos from this trip all day and so I'm like like oh, I know I know we got I know we got some awesome stuff coming. Let's see. That'd be kind of cool if I wasn't out of focus and blurry. I mean, can I get any better ones with this? What was I even trying to do with these photos? I mean, this might have been, might have been me just experimenting with the lens. That's better. Yeah, just the the view out of here is just so gorgeous. Uh, One 
more photo I want to do tonight. We've already done that area. Where did, the, where did the photos go that I took that were... I thought I did some shots that were more... Yeah, let's look at these. I think these are the ones I want to look at to start. Yeah, okay. Did a few where I got some nice... Let me get the mountains in the background. Actually, hang on. There's some shots here that are well exposed. We'll not find top of that. Just the. It's also interesting that like both Juno and Vancouver um, have, and I mean, I guess it makes sense. But Juno and Vancouver both have. Like that, you know, a substantial portion, like you know, substantial waterway in the middle of the area, of the middle of the area. So and so you've got and they, it's it's you've got people on both sides of of it, which is, I don't know. For for me, I'm kind of used to, for the most part, if you've got a, if you've got like a like a river or a bay running through an area, usually you know that's a natural boundary at the edge of the city, um, whereas. Or at least, yeah. You know, I mean, if, you know, if, it's a, if it's a sprawling city, like you know, if you've got something like Richmond where you got the James running through, that's that's a little bit different, I think. But even then, like downtown kind of ends there. Um, whereas with the cities around up in Alaska, you se seem to have uh, you know, have people on both sides, which is kind of cool. Uh, let's see. Any of these are really. And I'm shooting. Now I'm shooting through windows. Oh yeah, there's a, <laughs> again, talking about seaplanes being normal there, there's a tiny little seaplane in the, in the context of this huge landscape. Let's look at one of these. I think one of these that I, in the, I'm shooting an F-13, I should be able to pull that mountain out in terms of detail, let's see. Did I, all right, I shot an F-16 for that. Did I go any higher than that? That one's got some water on the lens, not necessarily in a bad way. That might be the one. Let's work on this one. So step one, unlock the thing. Step two, go to original, then unlock it again because apparently I have to do that. Let's pull this down so the shot is yeah. Branch of the foreground mountain in the background, kind of like that. Up the clarity. Let's be haste. See what we get. There we go. Now we're finding a mountain, but we're also pulling out the, also darkening the foreground, which I don't love exactly a whole lot. Okay. Again, I think I need some more space here so we get a little more sense of the mountain back there. Let's keep working on it. See, see if any of these really pull that out. That's a little better. It's the weird paradox, of like wanting to wanting to have the focus be in the foreground, but also having the detail in the background so you you see it. Pretty stuff in Juno. Juno's just like <laughs> there's a lot of pretty stuff in Juno. Uh, one of the things that is not pretty in Juno is the Capitol. This is this is not a picture. This is nothing to do with the Capitol. The totem pole here is just in downtown. I believe it's across from the uh, across the street from one of the uh, First Nations like visitor centers or museums. Um, I'm just adjusting the crop on this as I talk. But uh, Juno, Juno being the state capital of Alaska, uh, they have a Capitol building. Um, by the way, fun fact about Juno. Actually, let me, let me finish one story, and then I'll just tell you, and I'll finish with another one. Um, so yes, Juno being the state is the state capital. Uh, it has like obviously, the, which means it has the Capitol building uh, from for Alaska. And every year, uh, there is a ranking that goes out of the uh, you know country's prettiest state capitals, and Juno pretty consistently uh, gets fiftieth place. <laughs> 
Juneau has consistently been ranked the ugliest state capitol building uh, in the U.S. And having seen it, yeah, not necessarily wrong. Um, but I like actually I like I like a couple of these photos. Let's work on let's work on these real fast. Uh, there are some very beautiful areas. Uh, that's at the state capitol, notwithstanding. There are some very very beautiful areas of Juneau. Um, and also just honestly some fantastic food. The like speaking of, speaking of someone who is not an overall fan of fish and chips. The, uh, the halibut that we had was stunningly good. I wonder if I can do... There's a new trans... There's a... There's a they've been adding transform effects to this thing, and I'm curious. That helps flatten the shot a little bit. Yeah, it's big with that. I like that. Okay, back to the picture editing. A little bit of transforming there to kind of flatten that spot. I just don't know if there's much to do with this shot. I actually really like how this looks. And I kind of wonder if I bring up this, if I bring up the vibrance just a bit. A bit much. I think I'm gonna do these individually. Something I don't like about the vibrant slider is that you do it really does it does everything at this everything the same. And I'm really not I'm like I'd rather I'd rather kind of have be able to control these in different in different levels to different levels. Like I want to bring up the reds because the reds look awesome there. Uh, whereas in the blues kind of leans into the color of the mountains in the background. Oranges. Well, you know what? I'll pull the reds back and just stick with the oranges. That might actually be better. Yeah, those, those reds are nice. Pull the oranges back a little bit. Yellows. Yellows are going to pull up the greens a little bit. Let's kind of leave them where they are, but let's push the yellows a little bit toward green. Yeah, you know, let's leave them where they are. Let's keep, let's keep the colors. Let's keep, a di let's keep the... Let's enjoy the D. Diversity is the wrong word, but kind of just enjoy the colors. Uh, okay, let's do a little bit of work down on the water down there. Let's do some masking. Linear. Pull this back. Go down here like this. There we go. We're going to bring the highlights down. We'll bring the saturation up. We're going to adjust the color to a more, not quite that much. A little bit more purple. A little more of a nice blue in there. That looks pretty good. Bit so we get going to the edge. A bit too saturated, pull it down a little bit. We want to make sure that white turns into blue. There we go. We can bring the clarity up a little bit, bring the texture up a lot so it feels as equally detailed. That's how you do that. That looks great. Um, let's do a just for fun, a new mask, linear. We're going to do a big old kind of gradient white here. So it's kind of fades going across the whole thing, kind of like that. Push a little bit toward purple. Oh, that's a bit of fire. to the little calibration tool here, which we can use to kind of pull out. The calibration tool is a tool that I don't, I've never found I had a huge level, huge amount of love for because it, it does kind of seem like the, yeah, it does kind of seem like the tech, the, the tool for let's make this Instagrammable. 
So like, oh, it's like let's just apply a whole, you know, specific look to a thing, or not like a kind of less specific look to a thing, and just, I don't know. It seems like a very blunt instrument, and it kind of it seems kind of like designed to appeal to a color algorithm as opposed to letting the photo tell you what it wants to be. Because it's all it's all on these like sliders between our let's, let's you know the blues versus the yeah so like that's much more like of an Instagramable look of a photo. There's a lot of Instagram photos that have that kind of look and you know cityscapes that lean into that where you got the blues and the reds. But like to me, I'm like I like that there's a mix of color in this. I feel like we lose some of that. Uh, I feel like we lose a, a good chunk of that if we don't. Uh, yeah, you know, by using a tool like that, which is why I tend not—I tend not to. I like to have, yeah, I like that we have a mix in here. That's going to bring the blues and creams down a little bit. Bring the purples up a little bit. So there we go, that one looks pretty good. That's a pretty cool shot now. Uh, how's this one look? This one's a little bit... Did I, did I get the water in this one? Let's see. No, kind of just had that house on the hill there. I don't really want to do much more absent context. Let's look at this one. This one I know I don't have, but I got the mountains up there. If I dehaze that, how much? Hey. If I dehaze that, how much am I pulling out? I'm pulling out a decent amount there, but I'm also darkening a bit more than I want to. So I think we'll leave that where it is. Here's how this photo came out. That's lovely. Yeah, I like that one. I didn't even touch the clarity slider. No, that's too much. Texture slider? Maybe a little bit. Uh, yeah, upping the texture I think is good on this one. It gives us more detail. I like the water down at the bottom. Yeah, that was actually, we, that, that was an edit. Like here's like, originally it looked like that. Wow. Yep, dark. Huge difference. Darkened it, pulled out the blues. Which is again, I talk, I talk about overexposing when you take a photo. Sometimes overexposure, like, I don't know, the, the lesson, the thing I was always taught was it's better to underexpose than overexpose because you can always brighten it up a little bit and if you overexpose, you, you lose detail. The thing I found is that there's more, there's more color and information in white than there is in black and that you're better off just bright, you're better off going to, going to a brighter thing. Um, you can, doesn't, isn't to say you can't totally overexpose. Uh, we did, like, sort of did that here. Or like if I even if I, if I dehaze this and I pull the whites down, ah, you know what? There's actually I didn't overexpose this too much. I'm still get, there's still detail up there. So even a shot like that, that looks yeah, that looks like this, that looks like we and and with the histogram way over here, looking like I've peaked on the white side. There's still there's enough information to pull that down and and make that a usable photo. So, uh, yeah, I'm not trying like. I'm not sure I've got it. I mean, there's the one photo we deleted that had that was overexposed, and like no matter how much you darken it, you're not. There's certain areas you're not going to be able to get information out of. But uh, yeah, I think you're better off better off going a little little brighter than going darker if you if you if you're making that choice. Uh, especially here, especially in Alaska, just because you've got because you've got that fog, and like if you go brighter, it gives you more that you can like if you dehaze it, and if you pull down the Pull down some of the whites. Actually, that's a bit much. Pull down the highlights even like a little bit. You you find that information in there, which is just cool. And, you can bring, and then you can bring the shadows up a little bit. But so much in Alaska has that. Like even like, even shooting this photo, I still have, like, you know, yeah. There's the areas that look like they're foggy, and then there's the fact there's just a like the air is just a little bit hazier up there. So, you know, when you when you adjust the whites. You're more likely to be adjusting. Like I'm adjusting more, pretty much the whole photo here in little in little ways, some to you know bigger degrees in certain areas. But yeah. So anyway, that's uh, yeah. This is a, this has been our little tour of Juno. Real quick, gonna finish with a, with a real quick thing. Uh, so this is a shot from you know uh, yeah. You know, let, me, let me see. Do I have, if I've got enough information here to? Okay, yeah, we're gonna edit this photo because I've got enough information to, to do that. Yeah, we're gonna edit this photo real fast. Man, it's hard. It's harder to overexpose than I thought. Let's fit. I'm gonna look at these photos real quick and just kind of pick one. I did a bunch. I did a few of these. Yeah, you know, I think the first one's the best. I shot this from the from that tram, that cable car going up. So 
I am. <laughs> these are these are fo like I didn't have time to reframe and take other shots. These are, this thing is moving as I take photos. But another one that gave me chills. <laughs> yeah, that de so I tell you, there's there's enough information there to dehaze it and to, and to bring some pull some stuff out. It works really well. So let's dehaze this. Of course, dehazing a lot like that does give us. Come on, there we go. Like we're definitely adding some noise in here, and this is definitely grainier. But we can work with that, and that's fixable. Um, let's pull this in so we're kind of something like we can go into there. Yeah, let's do that. Let's go into about to about there so we get the the river kind of coming through to the corner of the frame. Maybe a little bit, a little bit more. Yeah, try to get those kind of coming in together. That's better. That gives us a nice, much a better scape of it. Um, but I would like it noted. So this is this is from Juneau. This is from the capital of Alaska. This is uh, like this is where the the governor of Alaska lives. Um, and even here, I'm on a higher vantage point than I would be if I was living in the governor's mansion. And you will look out and you'll see these areas here, like these, uh, yeah, like these these mountains out there and these bits of land. And they are far away. Like that, those are distant distant land masses. But I'd like it known, these are still part of the Inside Passage. These are still in Alaska. This is, we're, we haven't, we're not looking out past, the, like, Alaska's a thumb. Juno's kind of right here, kind of on the, the line between your, like, right, right below your fingerprint. That's kind of where Juno is on the, on Alaska, if it's a, if, you know, if you're doing Alaska as, as your hand. And what you're looking at here, like, this stuff is still, this is still part of Alaska. These mountains out here are still on that thumb and just a little bit further out. So all this to say, that's not Russia. <laughs> there is no house in Juno that you can see Russia from. So my hot take for 2022, Sarah Palin's a fucking idiot. Uh, I'm glad you stayed stuck around for that. That's the I know we were you know we like to bring the hot takes in right at the end. Sarah Palin is a moron. Uh, anyway. Back to this photo, which is a far more beautiful. This I'm just, this, editing this photo is going to turn into an entire Sarah Palin hate speech, and I'm all about it. This photo is far more beautiful than Sarah Palin, and smarter. This photo has more depth than Sarah Palin does. <laughs> this photo didn't name a kid with Down syndrome after the fact that the kid has Down syndrome. That's a thing she did, and it's ridiculous that we've forgotten that. So yeah, yes, uh, yes. Uh, Down syndrome is trisomy of the twenty-third chromosome, um, which is sometimes like the, I believe I believe there's an abbreviation of it. It's tri, as tri G, tri dash G, uh, and she named her kid Trig. So yeah, yep. Oh, did I did I, did I foreshadow that joke entirely too too much? Stephanie, what was the moment that like you figured out where I was going with that? Because I thought I was being, I thought I figured that that bit had been, like it had been long enough that I could get away and no, and people would, would have forgotten that we were making fun of Sarah Palin. I'm not afraid of all the colors. This just looks too freaking good. This photo photo's beautiful. Uh, and in case like, I mean, I think the song was written first, but if you're wondering what the, uh. Running with the Purple Mountain Majesties are. I'm, I'm going to say this a lot on these streams because goddamn Alaska's mountains are fucking gorgeous. Um, but yeah, purple, these these are this is kind of those Purple Mountains. This is the, you know when you from a distance the haze and the the blue light in the air does kind of cast that purple, which is just it's gorgeous. It's you can't beat it. Let's push our greens a little more toward blue. So it does kind of. I guess like if I go toward yellow, it does kind of stand out a little more. Nice. Let's go to a little more. Let's crop that in just a tiny bit. Don't lose the mountain back there. I want. The, I think the focus of this shot is the river. Let's actually go up a little higher if we wanted to and do. I go get a little more sky in there. I think that's good. Yeah. Again, we crop and adjust as we go. All right. Let's see. Color-wise, I'm not sure I want to change the color or anything else. I'll pull the greens back a little bit now that I'm not, not they're not taking up as much of the frame. Bring the blues, bring the blues down and really get some color coming in there. Green again, saturation difference. If I bring the if I bright, just by bright, by darkening the aquas, the color comes out more, which is beautiful. Greens, get the 
I'm gonna pull the greens down a little bit so they feel like they're kind of the same color as everything else. And I can brighten up the purples, is the purples and magentas. Um, uh, yeah, okay, the second line, yeah, okay. Yeah, I do kind of lampshade my jokes if I, if I over explain. That's a good point. Damn. Things to work on next time. Next time I decide to do a Sarah Palin hate rant, which, you know, honestly good for the soul. Cool, all right. All right, so we just gotta deal with some of this noise. I wanna do a little, uh, let's, let's do a select sky thing and see what we get. Uh, ooh, wow, that felt really good. And this stream is gonna, yeah, we wanna end the stream around two o'clock. This is actually gonna work perfectly. So, yeah, this, okay, so first off, noise reduction. Second off, texture up, texture down. Maybe the texture up a little bit. It's not gonna mess with my noise. Not really, it's still, it's a little noisy, but not too much. Uh, I'm gonna bring, don't have to, I'm not, I don't have to max, maximize that. If I do clarity, it gives me some darkness. I like that, but that's definitely, that definitely just added more noise back in, didn't it? Not as much as I thought. I can live with this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring the clarity down a little bit and do some of this with, with blacks. Just bring the shadows down. Highlights down is a good idea. This is the interesting thing, I think, is that there's the kind of default assumption when we talk about adding noise to something. Um, all right, let's do a new mask. I'm going to select the sky and then invert it. Talk about adding noise to something. Usually the default assumption is that you're trying to brighten up something that's too dark. That's where you get, like, grain in film. That's a thing. Um, but you can also, it's it's kind of a true across the board if you're trying to, if you're trying to, push something to a spot that it's not comfortable being. All right, let's up the noise reduction on this. That's a little bit. Let's also up the texture, because I do really want to pull the texture out of that, out of the water and, the, and everything down there. That's good. Cut the saturation, but that's going to look too garish. Let's leave that where it is. This photo's kind of cool, because it doesn't. It's It's got, it, it's got, the colors are striking, but they're, none of them are really in your face, and I kind of like that. A little bit softer. Clarity, not too much. It's like we can actually bring the clarity down a little bit. Yeah, let's soften that up a little bit. Again, let's make Alaska look gentle and, and beautiful. Dehaze is way too much. Yeah, let's leave it there. If I dehaze, if I take, if I reduce the dehazing, I start losing the colors, and that's a, that's important to not do. Also, we did a lot with dehazing in the other on in like when I wasn't working with masks, so we're gonna leave that as is. I can bring the shadows up a bit. I don't know if I want to though. There's something kind of nice about the. If I keep some, if I keep the shadows a little bit darker, the blue of the water stands out more. And that is kind of what we've decided this photo's about. So done. That looks pretty good. Uh, a little bit noisy, not in a way that bothers me too much. It gives it kind of a painterly look. Yeah. Uh, I want to work a little bit with those with the clouds a tiny bit more. the noise reduction down a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm going to allow a little bit of grain in there. Uh, bring the sharpness down a touch as well. Kind of soften up some of those spots. I think all the way down I'm going to get just a weird... No, it's actually doesn't look too bad. I'm, I'm not losing the detail in the... I'm not losing the color. Like the colors are what's actually helping me pull up the detail there. So I'm not losing too much. Cool. All right, let's... Bring the whites up a little bit. Actually, let's leave the whites where they are. Let's let the highlights just be a little brighter, so we're getting a little more, a little more lightness in there. I can push the saturation all the way up and get something like that, but I kind of like the nuance. Like this version, like a little bit of saturation here. Yeah, brings it in line, gives makes the colors. But yeah, you because like if I push the saturation all the way up, all this gets turned to blue. If I keep it, if I give it a little bit, it, the blues stay, but the purples pop out nicely, and that kind of gives the whole gives us the whole thing. All right. The only thing I would like to do a little more is have more aqua in here. I'm gonna push that up a little bit more. I'm gonna try, if I do it, this is gonna, this, let's see how well this works. If I do a color range and click on the aqua, what is it gonna give me? It's gonna give me the whole picture. Oh, it's not, actually, that's, that's not too bad. Um, I can reduce it down to more or less just the river. Yeah, I kinda like that. That actually works really well. And then I can pump the saturation. We can get a nice blue going there. Yeah. That looks fucking good. And the overlay, all right, I can do, I'm gonna add with a brush. Just a little bit up here. Just gonna just gently kinda add. 
Oops, let's not do that. Let's not do that. Let's not go full. Let's do to add for the brush. We're gonna bring the flow down to like 60%. And now we can add just a little bit out there without without drawing attention to it. it just kind of completes the picture. Cool. Alright. We can also bring it do it back here as well. All right, and that's probably, that's probably the poster child for the photo. That's probably the best photo uh, from tonight. And actually, there were some good ones. This is supposed to be just kind of a practice thing, but this is the photo from tonight. This is, a, this is my favorite for tonight, I think. So with that said, let's come back to me here. All right. Thank you very much. We're going to jump off stream for tonight. And uh, yeah, be sure to check in Thursday night around the same time. We're going to be doing uh, yeah, doing a cool thing that I've never done before. This is so exciting to be able to, to like, to be able to, this is like, this is Shelby Lynn's idea, and it's thrilling that like she chose me to be part of this so yeah we're going to be doing editing photos uh and writing poetry at the same time and it's kind of creating to you know creating you know art art that is you know simultaneously just like kind of created at the same time and meant to be together which is just wonderful so yeah uh i always say you know try to you know create awesome stuff and go out and be awesome and just share your creativity and yeah we're gonna try to try to live that in practice so with all that said Thank you for joining. Thank you for being part of this. Thank you for exploring Juno with me. Um, and uh, yeah, we will uh, we'll be back next time with a curated selection from the whole trip of, of just some of the best of the best that we can, uh, that inspire me and Shelby Lynn to turn it into poetry. And yeah, and then after that, we're gonna start kind of hopping around and we'll spend some time in Skagway and we'll do a, a, bunch, a bunch from Glacier Bay and we'll get to the wildlife, so. And man, wildlife, we've got we've got otters, we've got eagles, we've got seals, we've got bears, we got it all coming. So alright, with that said, good night, stay safe, keep making awesome art, and we will uh, we'll pick this up where we left off. Alright, good night. <laughs>